a horrible ghost appeared in his path and attacked him. <coughs> Hi friends, today I'm going to tell you a horror story that happened on an island in Avatar World. Mike and Mia moved into a house on the outskirts of town. When they arrived at work, Mia's colleague told them that she was going on holiday. Mia and Mike have been wanting to visit somewhere for a long time. When they got home, Mia asked Mike to find them a place to go on holiday. Mike found a holiday to an island far away from their town. He told Mia about it and they packed their bags, waiting for tomorrow's flight. They went to bed and Mia had a nightmare. Mia and Mike were on some beach by themselves. There were strange rustling noises coming from somewhere in the bushes. Mia was frightened and Mike went to check it out. When he got closer to the bushes, the rustling stopped. There's no one here, shouted Mike and went back to Mia. A horrible ghost appeared in his path and attacked him. Screams erupted all over the island. <coughs> Mia ran to the bushes, but there was no one there. She cried and screamed for help, but no one was there. Mike woke up terrified and woke up Mia. Mia started to reassure Mike that it was just a dream and it wasn't connected to reality. Mike was afraid to go to the island all day. But in the evening when it was time for their flight, Mike overcame his fear and got on the plane. On the plane, Mike and Mia were asked by a strange stewardess if they had heard about the secret attraction of the island. Mike and Mia asked what she meant. The plane started to experience severe turbulence and the stewardess with a snide smile ran to help the other passengers. When the plane landed, Mike told his girlfriend that he had a bad feeling. But Mia calmed him down and they went to have fun and relax on the island. When evening came, the holiday makers started to leave. Mia and Mike were alone on the beach enjoying the silence. Someone from behind started calling for help. Mike immediately ran to the screams. When he got to the place where the sounds were coming from, there was no one there. In the bushes not far from this place came some rustling. Mike thought that someone who needs help hid there and ran to the bushes. When Mike arrived, he realized that he had seen this situation in a dream. The ghost appeared in front of the guy. We finally meet again, Mike, said the ghost. Suddenly Mike woke up on the plane. It turned out that he had dozed off on the flight to the island. Mia asked, did you have the same dream you had at home? Mike was very scared and said he didn't want to go to the beach. When they landed, Mike and Mia bought return tickets so they wouldn't have to spend the night on the island. But the return tickets weren't until tomorrow. Mia and Mike decided to spend the night at the airport. Night came and the airport closed. It was completely empty, but Mia and Mike were relieved. They were starting to fall asleep, but suddenly a trolley rolled by them. The guys were very frightened because they were at the airport and there was no one to push it. From the other end of the airport came a voice calling out to Mike. Mike's eyes turned white and he went to the sound of the voice. Mia got really scared and asked Mike to stop, but he kept walking further and further away. Mike walked up to the place and a ghost appeared next to him. They surrounded Mia together and told her that she was about to become one of them. Mia screamed all over the island, but no one came to help. In the morning, the security guard was the first to return to the airport. He went to check if everything was okay and saw Mia's earrings on the floor. He thought someone had lost them, but the ghost of a lifeguard appeared in front of him. I thought you'd never come back here again, Oliver, said the guard. But the ghost told him he had new business on the island to finish. When the rest of the staff arrived at the airport, neither the guard nor the ghost was there. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, the guard Jake and the ghost Oliver went on holiday with their parents to this island. They had a good time, everyone had fun and enjoyed the beauty of the island. But one day a tsunami hit the island and Oliver disappeared. Parents and Jake were terribly upset and searched for the boy for several days, but all without success. Jake went to town with his family. Everyone was shocked and could not calm down. At home, Jake went straight to bed. He had a dream with Oliver. Oliver was urging Jake to go back to the island for something, and the boy agreed to go. He woke up and ran away from home. He managed to get to the island without his parents. On the shore, Jake was met by Oliver in the guise of a ghost and told that he couldn't leave the island. In order for me to return to the world of the living, I must replace myself with another person. Oliver said crying. Jake was frightened, but also happy to have his friend back. But the person must agree to take my place, Oliver continued. Jake managed to visit his friend a few more times, but on one of his regular escapes, his parents caught Jake. Where are you going at night? asked Jake's mom angrily. He told what happened to Oliver, but his mom didn't believe him and forbade him to leave the house alone at night. On the island, Oliver tried to talk to a lone tourist to get him to take the place of the island spirit. But the tourist got angry and yelled at him. That's when Oliver's smile changed. There was an island-wide scream. To this day, no one knows what happened to the tourist that night. 
Oliver had stopped looking for a replacement. The island had changed him, and now he just attacked tourists. Jake heard about the missing people, but Oliver assured his friend that he hadn't done anything wrong. But one night, Jake saw his friend sneaking up on a tourist with a sinister smile. He screamed and Oliver disappeared, and the holiday maker threw Jake a very strange look and walked away. He realized that all the trouble on the island was his friend's fault. Jake was very upset. He decided to rid the island of the spirit, but he didn't know who to turn to. Suddenly, Jake found a newspaper right on the beach. It told about a local witch doctor who helped people with their problems. He didn't believe in people with paranormal powers, but there were no other options. Jake headed for the house at the address on the paper. Suddenly, Oliver appeared in front of him. He had changed even more. Where you headed, mate? Oliver asked with a chuckle. I think I found a way to help you, Jake replied. Oliver laughed out loud. I don't need any more help. I'm the master of this island, Oliver said. Jake didn't listen to his friend and just walked away. A few hours later, Jake reached the sorcerer's house. An old man named Harold was resting on the porch. Good afternoon, sir. I need your help, Jake said. Your friend doesn't have much time left. He's out of control and has taken too many lives, replied the old man. Jake was shocked. Harold only yawned tiredly, ignoring his guest's surprise. How can I help him? Jake asked tearfully. You have one night to find and break the artifact that's keeping your friend on the island. Otherwise it will be too late, the sorcerer continued. Jake couldn't believe what he was hearing, but he still returned to the shore and went in search of the artifact. The sun was almost up and his attempts were unsuccessful. Suddenly Oliver reappeared. He laughed loudly and said in an ominous voice, Soon I'll take over this island, and then I'll start taking over the cities. Jake had already given up hope when he saw the artifact right behind Oliver's back. You're right, mate, I shouldn't get in your way, Jake said. Oliver was a little surprised, but glad for his friend's decision. Jake made a sharp jerk, and in a second, he had the artifact in his hand. The sinister smile disappeared from Oliver's face, but his eyes remained white. If you break it, I'll leave and never come back, Oliver said. You're my mate, Jake, don't do this to me, cried Oliver A. Jake didn't believe the ghost's words and smashed the artifact. Its shards vanished into thin air along with Oliver. Jake cried with worry and the disappearance of his longtime friend. Oliver had never returned, but now Jake knew the island guests were safe. The next day, Jake quit his job. He bought his tickets and flew home. Jake got off the plane and headed for the airport gate. Suddenly, someone patted him on the shoulder. It was Oliver. He was human again. Oliver was very grateful to his friend for saving his life. They discussed what had happened for a long time, but they agreed that the story would stay just between them. They never visited that island again, but they say that lately people have been going missing there. Jake and Oliver hope it's not haunted, but they're ready to face their fears, because now they're forever linked to that island, as much as Jake and Oliver don't want that to happen.